afternoon and welcome to the worship service of Greater Quinn African Methodist Episcopal Church, or as our pastor affectionately calls us, The Greater. We are so blessed and honored that you are joining with us on this first Sunday of April. We just invite you to enjoy yourself in, in any way you see fit. If you want to clap along, sing along, pray along, we just invite you to have your way with us in this service. Our pastor is the magnificent Robert Blake. Our associate ministers are the Reverend Dr. Laura Foster and the Reverend Deborah Elliott. We are located on the historic corner of Rosa Parks and Davison, that address being 13501 Rosa Parks, Davison. Our opening song this morning that you are invited to join us in is All of My Life, or some others know it as Down Through the Years, God Has Been Good to Me. All of my life, all of my life, God has been, all of my life, what are we down through the years, God's been good to me, amen, God. Down through the years, God's been good. Down through the years, God's been good. Down through the years, my God has been good. Oh, all of my life. All of my life, God's been good. All of my life, my God has been good. All of my life, my God has been good. All of my life, good to me. For those that be traveling up and down the road, even when you've been flying on on those cruise ships, God has kept and protected, so we praise him for just keeping us up and down that road. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you for your protection. Really been good to me. Down, 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 down.
to us. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. We thank and praise him. We thank and praise him on today. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. All of my life, whether you've been here one year, whether you've been 91 years, 81 years, 71 years, all of your life, we recognize it and we thank you, oh God. Even when we weren't deserving, oh God. Even when we messed up, oh God, you have kept us. And for that, we are grateful. Amen. Amen. We'll be taken to the throne of grace. We'll be led in prayer by Reverend Deborah Elliott. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, I think the table has been set. Thank you, God. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes! Hallelujah! Woo! The spirit that's high in here this morning, that's something you can't feel on Facebook Live. You got to be in the service. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, it's such a sweet, sweet spirit in this place this morning. Thank you, Father. Mm. Mm. Woo! I heard the songwriter say, say there's something about the name of Jesus. It just won't let me hold my peace. Thank you. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, thank you, God. Down through the years, Lord, you have been good to us. And we thank you for that, God. You're still keeping us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're still keeping us as we go up and down the road. And we thank you. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we have an attitude of gratitude this morning. Lord, we are so grateful and thankful, God, for all that you have been doing in our lives. God, we don't have to look for tomorrow to say thank you because, God, you have kept us. God, today, God, you allow us to get up and wake up this morning. God, you gave us the activity of our limbs. God, you allow us to put one foot in front of the other. And we're thankful for that. God, you allow us to go into our vehicle and it started up this morning. We're thankful for that. God, you allow us to make it safely here and we're thankful for that. God, you allow our pastor to make it safely here and through everything that he's been through, God, you kept him. And we thank you for that. Now, Heavenly Father, have your way in this service today. God, I know we have a program, but we're on your program. So let the Holy Spirit do what it do. God, fill us up this morning. God, help us to praise your name this morning, to give you the honor and the glory. 
God, we just ask for those who are standing in the need of prayer, that God, you be their provider. God, you know what they need individually and collectively. Do what you do best, God. Do it right now, sir. Before I can get the words out of my mouth, you're already moving some things out of the lives of your people. You're already healing right now. You're already mending and fixing right now. You're already making a way out of no way right now. You're already answering prayers right now. Woo! God, you're doing it. You're doing it. And we're thankful. Have your way this morning. Touch the musician. Touch the choir. Touch the members. Touch the pastor. Give him a word this morning that will uplift, encourage, that will give your people hope for tomorrow. God, we need you in a world, in a world, in a world filled with hate, filled with anger, filled with people feeling that they can do whatever they want to do to another person without any repercussions. God, we love you. We're praying for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine this morning, God. God, we're keeping them close to our hearts. Be with them, God. Give them a respite from this war, war, war right now, God. Cease the bombs from being flown over their homes and in their land. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Now our own Reverend Laura Foster will bring the scripture for today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, you can do better than that. He, you woke up, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Another day journey, and I'm glad about it. <laughs> Romans 8, 28, 37. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who all are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did for not, he also did president to be confirmed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he shall also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified them, he also glorified. What shall we then to say these things? If God be for us, I'm going to say that again. If God be for us, who, 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 who has going to be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is it he that condemneth? If it is Christ that died, ye rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I'm going to say that again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tri tri tribulation, 
distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. I'm going to say that again. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more, we are more, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. The next uh, person doesn't need an introduction, but he deserves to be introduced. These last six Sundays, we've had some amazing uh, guest ministers that have brought an anointed and mighty word. But there's nothing better than having your own shepherd speak a word over you. So on today, I'm pleased to announce that our own Reverend Robert Blake, our pastor, will be bringing today's word. <clears throat> We're so happy and so delighted and just so thankful to God that he has healed him. He's continu continuing to heal him, and he's back shepherding us in person, not through text or over the phone. So after the choir, the next voice you hear will be that of our own Pastor Robert Blake.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I want you to do something for me. Um, and I have to admit, I, I messed up this morning already. For oh, it's been a journey. But I want you to do something for me, uh, a favor. Three days ago, I was in Raleigh, North Carolina, bearing a wonderful, God-fearing, anointed cousin of mine. Um, we had just started family prayer in February, and she was on, and I gave my family the witness and the testimony. And on the day of the next family prayer, which was in March, the end of March, uh, the Lord called her home. Um, and during the funeral celebration or the celebration of service, her husband of course broken but in the midst of being broken Kathy he was praising the Lord and he sat in a funeral home with a room full of folk and I'm going to put it this way who wouldn't go with him He was saying goodbye to his wife, but he was praising God like I'd never seen before. Bonnie, he was just praising God. All he could do was just praise God and, and thank Jesus. And nobody went with him. I, I know we're in a funeral home, but nobody would go with him. Uh, but I'm home this morning. And I see how y'all are acting. And it's just good to be home. Can I say that to you? So will you do this for me? All over the house. Will you do this for me? I, I want you to praise God for just a moment for my cousin. I, I want you to bless Jesus for my cousin. I, I want you to bless God for my cousin today. I, I want you to help him out there because I know this deacon's having a hard time this morning, but I want you to thank God for his goodness. I, I want you to thank God for his mercy. I, I want you to thank God for his grace. I, I want, to, want you to thank God for his kindness. I want you to bless him today. Come on and bless him in this house. Come on and thank him. We bless you. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we bless you, God. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you today. We bless your name. And we thank you for your goodness and your mercy.
Come on, let's have a word of prayer. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, through the power of your shed blood, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the privilege, God, of restoration and healing and deliverance. We thank you, God, that you're God all by yourself. We thank you, dear God, that you allow us to stand as the witness, as a testimony about what you can do, oh God. We bless you today, and we're just full, just happy to be here one more time, God, because we realize our days are not promised, dear God, and unless you order them so. And so, Father, we appreciate you that you still ordered our days, and we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Now bless us, God, with a word. Do you and us, God, in the name of Jesus. Let the meditation of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight. Come on, Father, work us this afternoon for just a moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Give us minds to conceive, hearts to believe, and ears to receive the spoken word of God. Grant us, in, grant us accuracy in preaching, teaching, and speaking however you give it to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we thank you for it. We say yes, and we say thank you, and we say praise the Lord. Um, I was rustling and caught between some sermons, and I have to be honest, I have none this morning, but me. But before we say whatever we're going to say this morning, I do want to thank the Reverend Amani Henry, the Reverend Cabriel Baker, our own Reverend Lisa, Pastor Lisa, Pastor Cabriel, Pastor Jerry Hatter, Pastor Larry Simmons, our own Reverend Deborah Elliott, who gave us a call. And the young man you will hear from again, Minister Michael Young. Come on and put your hands together and give God praise for what you've heard. They came and delivered to the greater, and I'm so grateful to them. We don't do this thing called ministry by ourselves. You need friends along the way. You need help along the way. You don't do it by yourself. And so we just thank God for the help. Uh, I want to thank the greater for their prayers. I, I want to thank the Noonday Prayer class who never failed to encourage, 
to speak a word, to agree, I so love you and so appreciate you. Uh, and if you got time at noon, you get on that prayer line. Uh, we have seen deliverance. We have seen healing. We have seen the miraculous. We've seen greatness. God has blessed us. For the most part, he blesses us with sunshine every day. <laughs> so we just thank God for, I thank God for all of you. I thank God for the stewards. Amen. I was going to say my stewards, but they belong to the Lord. I thank God for the stewards who watched over the pastor and kept him to all of you. Thank God for Sister Desiree, amen, who put up with the patient. If I didn't, if I missed you, I thank God for the greater. Sometimes what you say comes back to get you. And I told you this earlier. Amen. When y'all didn't like the fact I was calling you the greater and not Miracle on 12th Street. But sometimes you've got to get to point A to get to point B. So we are the greater. So we have seen the miraculous and we're going to continue to see the miraculous. I see some faces here for the first time. God bless you. Good to see you. Good to have you in the house today. Amen. We appreciate you so very, very much. Amen. Uh, you heard the scripture this afternoon, and I'm not sure it's the right one, Sid, but anyway, I gave it to you anyway. No. W when the journey started, most of you don't know, when the journey started of what was going on with this pastor, um, We were in pain that I kept hid from you uh, up until I told you what was going on with me. I went back and looked at the medical reports, and it was in September that we were just struggling to stand here, to even get out of bed and to get out of bed without pain. So for those of you who are experienced chronic pain, we're, we're going to pray today for you. Um, some things God allows you to experience so you can be the witness and you can be the testimony of what he wants to do with it. A and so from September all the way into the time of surgery, I was needing Advil to function. I remember I was here doing Bible class uh, one Wednesday, and I'd never had the problem on Wednesday after I, got, after I left home, but I sat so long where the pain hit me when I got up. Um, I think the only person that really saw me was Lillette, and she didn't say anything. But I was messed up and just didn't know what was going on, what, what was happening to me. Finally, I was able to see a back and spine specialist, and she said, well, you need to have PT. So that's fine. We did PT. Uh, but the, the pain still persisted, and I was still popping Advil like candy. And finally, she said to me, haven't you had a MRI? I said, I didn't know I was supposed to have an MRI. And she said, well, you need to have an MRI so we can figure out what's going on with you. So uh, every time I scheduled an appointment, it was like, it was just like this. Every time I scheduled an appointment, it wasn't weeks. I hear horror stories about people having to wait weeks and months to get an appointment. Everything was just happening. And so uh, I went on and had the MRI. The very next day, the medical report came back that I had a cyst on my fourth lumbar 
at the root nerve. And, and see this pain, it only, it worked this way, this way on the right, on my right side, just hurting. Um, but they said, but well, we see something on your right kidney, so we need to, you need to have a CT scan with the contrast. And it's like, when? Well, next week. So, because we think it's something. So the very next week I have the CT scan and with the contrast. And I remember coming here on Wednesday. We're here Wednesday for Bible class. And uh, I remember coming upstairs uh, just during prayer time. And I was looking at my medical profile in the portal, seeing if the uh, message was there. And the message was there. And so I was reading it. And. You know, I'm like, well, bless God. I think he even got on the prayer line and said, oh, bless God. You know, I'm good. Da, 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 da. I sent it to Desiree. Desiree said, called me back and said, we need to talk to somebody right now. And I'm like, well, what did I miss? So she told me what I missed. I reread it and it said, well, they think there's something on your right kidney and they think it's cancerous. So I, uh, I'm like, wow. Okay. So I have this cyst. And I have this tumor on my right kidney. That's bad news. But in the midst of it, Joyce Mills, I got good news. And it hadn't happened to me, I can't say in a while. And, and Tim, the good news was three Ds. Dissolve, dissipate, disappear. And I got a sermon. And the sermon is titled, If I Hadn't Known That, I Wouldn't Have Known This. So that's what I got. So we told the boys, and I, it might even be been before we talked to the year on college, called the boys, called Danon for sure. You know, and Danon's going to pray like right now. He's just, and we were in agreement. And so. Uh, the, the 3D Sharon turned into 4Ds, dissolved, yes. dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. Everything was in past tense. I need to help you today. So I have these 4Ds. I, I have a sermon, and I had a peace. So we talked to your oncologist, young man, brilliant guy, and everything he told me came to pass. How difficult the biopsy would be, um, and, and what was really interesting was that before I had the biopsy, I had to have something else happen to me because the cyst was still there. I was still popping Advil like candy, and so I needed to have them stick me in my back. Some of you have already had the shots before. Amen. And I'm like, you ain't sticking nothing in my bag. But when I was talking to the uro-oncologist, he said, I can't do anything for you. I can't have the, we can't do the biopsy unless you have the epidural. Because if you're still on the NSAIDs, you know, your aspirin, your Advil, those type of things, you'll bleed out. So I'm like, God, what? Every step of the way, God's trust at testing the faith of mine. Because I don't like pain. But can I help you this afternoon? I understood pain from September to February. I know what pain is now. I know what pain is when you just stop and you're just hurting and you can't do nothing about it. When you, they give you exercises to do and you can't even get down to do the exercises or you lay down on your, on your stomach and you're just in so much pain you can't even move. I got pain, y'all. So when it came to the epidural, that was a wash. That was no problem. Then it came time for the biopsy. And so we did the hospital thing on a very snowy Monday morning and got to the hospital early, got all the blood work done and everything. Prepped me for the biopsy, took me in, and they couldn't get to it or they couldn't see it well enough. And so they said, we can't see this, what we need to do. And actually, my doctor told me it was going to be hard to get to. So we're going to have to give you another CT scan. So 
they took me out of the room and took me back into the prep room. And there I lay for about two and a half, three hours until another room came up for them to give me a CT scan. Once I got in there, they could finally get to it. Then you have to lay on your back for three hours so you don't bleed out, or they make sure you don't bleed out. So got there about 8.30 a.m., didn't leave until about 6.30 p.m. Got the biopsy. Pathology report took about a week. He called and said, it is what it is. And said, if you remember, I was here on a Monday night. I was sitting right on those stairs talking to the uro-oncologist. And he said, to the, he said this to me. He said, if I were your cousin or you were my uncle, I wouldn't do radiation. I would just go after it and take it off. And I said to him, you are my cousin, so I trust you. But all the while you are dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. Okay? As, as the time went on, I realized that those deeds were just not for me. But they were for other folk. And from Florida to North Carolina to Michigan to Maryland, people have heard those four Ds. From California, because my cousin had called me and said, you know, the doctors have seen something and they, they want to test me for whatever. I said dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. From Arizona, they've heard dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. So comes time for the surgery. Well, no, before that, after the pathology report comes, they call me in a couple of days and says, we give you two dates, February 11th, February 23rd. I said, I'll take February 11th. And that was like the 5th of February, 4th of February. They said, well, you need to have we can do post-op that Friday, Tuesday have a COVID test, and on Friday we'll do surgery. And it was just like that, bam, post-op on Friday, I mean pre-op on Friday, Tuesday have a COVID test, and Friday the 11th we were in for surgery. Um, dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. Okay comes time for the surgeon, there's some apprehension only because of where we were. I grew up in Ann Arbor. I know about the University of Michigan Hospital, okay? I, I saw my father laying there in the emergency room there. I, I know about University of Michigan Hospital. Desiree worked there for 30 years. I know about it. That's where I feel comfortable. But they said, you're going to Chelsea. <laughs> I'm like, Chelsea? <laughs> Chelsea? <laughs> I know Chelsea. That's where they make Jiffy bread, not Chelsea. Dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. We get to Chelsea and find out that our Euro oncologist, he's the chief medical officer there. And there's a partnership between St. Joe and U of M. All the nurses were nice. As we prepared for this surgery, I can't tell you what I feel, what I was feeling, you all. But I know this, Danielle, I wasn't feeling no fear. Dissolved, dissipated. This is for somebody. Disappeared, and destroyed. I, I, I remember that just before surgery, when the uh, Anesthesiologists came in and they were about to give me everything that they were going to give me. I was, on the, I was on the bed and he said, well, we want your feet to swing over the side of the bed and just kind of lean over the table. And they're looking at my back and marking my back and um, had the IVs in all over everywhere. And I remember talking to them. And then the next thing I remember was waking up. I was cold. I was 
I was cold. I was so cold. I told Desiree I was. I just was cold, but I was alive, Sandra. But I was cold. <laughs> And I remember saying to the Lord, you know, I just, I just don't want a lot of pain in all of this, in this recovery. And, and so the night, surgery was around, I don't know what time, 3.30 or something like that. And I remember Ray left and I got up around 11.30 because they wanted me to walk. And so they, you know, they filled me with all the drugs and, I, you know, I didn't feel any pain. All right, it's just a weird sensation being out. That was the first time I'd really ever been out like that. I mean, we've done all the other little tests, but there was something different about that. But by the next morning, they came in. He came in and talked to me, told me what I needed to do. And by that Saturday afternoon, I was on my way home, dissolved dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. The very next week, that Saturday, your oncologist calls and says, you look good, the markers are clear, and you're all right. And I was like, dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. They'd give me Oxycontin. I'm going to give you the story. They gave me the Oxycontin, and, you know, you have to sign for that. That's heavy duty. And I took it for about 36 hours, and then it was like, am I just sore or am I having pain? Well, I wasn't having pain. The Lord was gracious. I was sore because of the incisions. I have five incisions. I was sore, but I didn't have any pain. So I just stopped that. They gave me the Tylenol 600s, and I would take a couple of those for about a week or two. Huh, Tylenol, excuse me, and then I stopped that. All in all, I'm helping somebody today. The Lord was true to his word. If you will trust him today, if you will hear him today, the Lord remains true to his word. Jeremiah says in 112 that he is alert and he is active. And he watches over his word to perform it. His word. That's all I had to go on, his word. And it's interesting because a friend of mine across the country went through as well. She's been on our prayer line before, not our prayer line, but when we do the seven days of prayer, Prophetess Watkins, going through the same time, the doctors say, you have this. It's amazing how many people are struck down with, with cancers. Many die. But, but I need you to know, many live. I, I was in North Carolina, and we were sitting up talking about our family members that actually had died of cancer. Some because they wouldn't stop smoking cigarettes. Some because of other things. And even in our own household. But the Lord has been gracious. And all we can do is stand on his word. And you know what? Every time the message came, cancer, the answer was this. Well, at least it's not bad as it could be. It can always be worse. Yes. If I'm talking to you today and you're going through, I, I couldn't get rid of the text, 
because I couldn't get rid of the 37th verse, which I believe says, but we are more than conquerors. Through him that loves us. I, I guess, Robin, if I hadn't heard the voice of the Lord, I guess I'd been in shreds. But, but when I heard the word, when I, when I got the word, when I received the word, that was no deal. It, that's the wash. I don't care what's going on. That's the wash. I got dissolved. I, I got dissipated. I got disappeared. And I got destroyed. And I got a sermon. Because if it hadn't been for that, and that was the cyst. That was the pain. That was the aching. If it hadn't have been for that, I wouldn't have known about this on the kidney. They're, they're just not giving you MRIs when you take your physical. They're not just giving you CT scans when you go in for your physical. You talk to your doctor. You don't know what's going on in your body. You have no way of knowing. And yet, for some odd reason, the Lord allowed, hallelujah, the pain to hit this body to let me know there are four Ds in your life dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. So when you think you're going through, can I help you today? Hallelujah. If it hadn't have been for the crippling pain, I mean men crying pain. That's how bad this pain was. You know, folks talk about my sciatic nerve. It was worse than that. Pain that wouldn't let me go. But if not for the pain, watch this. I'm going somewhere, then I'll be done. There wouldn't have been no salvation. Come on, somebody. Can I help you this afternoon? Can I take us home for just a minute? If there had to been no pain, there wouldn't have been any salvation. Can I help you if they hadn't slapped him in the face? There wouldn't have been any salvation. If they hadn't have talked about his family, there wouldn't have been any salvation. Uh, if they hadn't put any nails in his wrist, uh, there wouldn't have been any salvation. If they hadn't put any nails in his feet, uh, there wouldn't have been any salvation. Uh, if they hadn't hung him on a tree, uh, there wouldn't have been any salvation. Uh, but there was pain uh, that we might be saved. <laughs> Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. But guess what? They might have hung him on the cross. But on the third day, he got up. And all power was in his hand. He got up. A conquering king. He got up. I am the Lord. He got up. In the midst of pain, Father, forgive them. Father, where did you go in the midst of pain? He got up. Praise God, he allows us to get up because he dissolved that thing. He dissipated it. It disappeared and it was destroyed. He got up. And because he got up, we get up. Hallelujah. When the Lord speaks, you listen. And you believe what he says in his word. Hallelujah. And you declare it to yourself. I was telling the prayer group, hallelujah, they're praying for me. And I heard what they were saying. And sometimes I would just stop them because I need you to agree with me. I know what you want to say. I know what you want to believe. But I know how I believe. And I just needed you to agree with me. And they say, you know, Reverend, you're going to be all right. And I would say, no, baby, I ain't going to be all right. I am all right. Reverend, you going to be healed. No, I ain't going to be nothing. I'm already healed because I got dissolved. I got dissipated. I got destroyed. And I got disappeared. That's what I believe. God was gracious to honor who am I? But he was gracious. That's why you know what your pastor says. The Lord is what? The Lord is gracious. 
That's all we know. If you don't know him today, I invite you to know the gracious God. If you don't know him today, I invite you to know the healer. If, if you don't know him today, I, I invite you to know the deliverer. I'll preach next week. If you don't know him today, I invite you to know the one who watches over his word to perform it in you. I don't know what you've gone through. But let's put something out there on our key, and I hope you read it. It's just two words. It just says, you matter. Laying in a hospital bed, you matter. Getting ready for surgery, you matter. In recovery, you matter. Watching your body heal, you matter. In the midst of all your pain, you matter. In the midst of all your distresses, you matter. You matter. And the God that we serve, has got you in his best interest. May the Lord bless you this afternoon. May the Lord keep you. If it hadn't been for that, I wouldn't have known this. I thank God for his word. Dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. That's not just my word. It's in this season for you. Do you hear me? Now, I don't care what the doctor says. It's in this season. It's an everlasting word. If you don't know him today, we invite you to really know him. I ain't talking about religion. I'm talking about relationship. You, you might have gone to all sorts of churches around this city. I ain't hating I'm, I'm just saying here, it's about relationship. There's a difference. We can be as religious as we want to be until you get the relationship. Because that's all he's after anyway. The soul love that he has for you. Come on, stand to your feet all over this house. To those of you who are watching us on Facebook Live, it's I know it wasn't your usual sermon, and it's okay. But we're speaking to you as well. Dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. That's the word that he has for you today. If you don't know him, if you need him, if you want him, take a step from where you are. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to serve you here. It's not good being out there by yourself. When we got in this thing, we had all sorts of friends calling us from all around the country, just praying for us. And some days I would just sit back and smile. Folk would call me and just say, Pastor, I just want to pray for you. And I just smiled. You reap what you sow. Folk would just pray for me. People did kind acts. Yeah, I'm going to say it. One day, uh, <laughs> Sister Lenore just came over and just blessed the house. I was like, People were kind, nice, but prayerful. If you don't have any friends that can pray for you, can I help you this afternoon? If you can't do nothing else, get you some friends that can pray for you, that can get heaven for you, that can get the ear of God for you. Hallelujah. Are you here today? Just take a step from where you are. Come on, y'all. You're not here by chance or by mistake or coincidence. Are you here today? If you don't know him, come on. If you don't have a church home, come on. Will you come today? He is a keeper. Yes, he is. He's a keeper, yes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. 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 Yes, he is. Keeper. Keeper. 
Yes, he 
he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, y'all, pray steals the enemy. Pray steals it. Hey! 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 He's a keeper. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. He's the keeper. Yes, he is a keeper. Amen. Amen. It, 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 it. first Sunday in April and I was remiss in doing it for uh, January, February and March but we want to acknowledge all of the April birthdays for this month. If you are celebrating your birthday this month we want to acknowledge you. We want to praise God. Amen. Amen. We want to praise God for you. April birthdays. April birthdays. Stand up. Lift your hand up. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. You got a birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. All right, Mother Foster will be 92 this year. Yes. Hey, hey, it's your birthday. It's your birthday. Oh, it's Saturday. On Saturday, the, uh, what's that, the 9th? She'll be 92 on the 9th. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And we got a couple of more people standing up. Amen, Joan. On the 10th, Joanne will be a, uh, have a birthday on the 10th. I won't tell it. I won't tell it. <laughs> and we have uh, Fred in the back and another visitor. Visit Two visitors. Amen. On the 10th, we got somebody on the 10th. What we got? What we got? What we got? What we got? On the 17th. On the 17th. Danielle. Danielle. On the, uh, what's that? The, the, the 5th. We got Danielle on the 5th. Amen. Anybody else? Come on, get your celebrate in now. And Lelette on the 26th. Amen. Let's get it in. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. That's what church is. If you can't be joyful and have fun in the Lord, you got the wrong Lord. Hey, happy birthday. Hey. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, praise the Lord. Amen. Be blessed. Be blessed. We thank God to be able to celebrate with you on today. And maybe we'll remember the next couple of Sundays, but if not, we have celebrated. We bless you. We uh, praise God for you and know that we'll be lifting you up. Amen. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> for 
those who have been joining with us, you know, but for those who are new, we have a Bible study on Wednesdays via Zoom. And that's at, is it 10 or 10.30? 10.30, and in person this Sunday, and in person this Sunday, and in person this Wednesday. Oh, this Sunday. Wednesday. This Wednesday. Sunday, Wednesday. this Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, thank you. Wait a minute. Amen. This Wednesday, a Bible study will be in person and on Zoom at 10 o'clock this 10:30. Wednesday. 10.30. I just want to see if y'all was paying attention. 30. What time is Bible study in the a.m.? See, very good. I'm so proud of y'all. And it's going to be in person and on Zoom. For your smart devices, the Zoom ID is 861-3619-8112. So for your tablet, your phone, your pewter, not your computer, your pewter, 861-3619-8112. And if you want to call in, the phone number is 312-626-6779. Again, if you're going to call in, 312-626-6779. And then in the evening, uh, Bible study is at 630 and that's via Zoom. And that's via Zoom. Uh, as Pastor said, we have noon prayer Monday through Saturday, and that's straight call in. And that phone number is 313-246-9552. Again, that's noon prayer, anointed noon prayer, Monday through Saturday. And that phone number is 313-246-9552. I believe that's all of our announcements. I'm checking, I'm checking. While uh, Sister Armstrong is coming up, we'd like to remind you that there are four ways to give. Thank you, Les. Four ways to give. Cash App, Givelify, and PayPal. And it's all using our, our first two names, Greater Quinn. PayPal, Cash App, Givelify. We would be so blessed if you would bless us financially. Or you can always come on in. Come on in the room and join us and give your offering in person or you can always drop it off or mail it and that address is 13501 Rosa Parks Boulevard 13501 Rosa Parks Boulevard Detroit Michigan 48238 uh Reverend, uh, Reverend Diane oh 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 uh Granny Diane or Mrs. Armstrong Good afternoon. It's one thing about our church. <laughs> they will call you out even when you don't know about it. But in all sincerity, what Sister Eubanks wanted me to announce, in case some of you did not know, that my cousin, Shirley Connor Burnett, that used to come to our church before she got too ill, she did pass away. I will send the information out. And it, it just really came to me as Pastor was talking about cancer. And we know she... She struggled. And it's amazing. I was supposed to be out of town, but I told my son I can't go because that is my first and my oldest cousin. My uncle is 100 years old. She was living in Kentucky or someplace with her oldest son because he wanted her to be close to him. But it got so bad. And we all know, she started telling her son, she said, I got to get home. I have got to get home to see my daddy and my grandson. So she was here for approximately three weeks, and she passed. But we know where she is. So we do not have that problem. She has touched so many lives, even of the ones here at Greater Quinn. So we thank you, and we will continue to keep my family and my uncle 
in your prayers. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. We'll turn the service, turn the service back into the hands of our own Pastor Blake. Therefore, Holy Communion at this moment, uh, we'll commune those of you who are watching us on Facebook Live at this moment, those of you who are at home, prepare yourselves with your bread and with your juice, your wine, amen. Um, I want to again thank Greater, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I thank you all for being here today, for being in the house, and uh, it was home today. It was, it, was, it was the greater today. Yeah, amen. To those of you who are uh, with us today, visiting with us, God bless you. Thank you so very much. If you were here last week, I wasn't, but amen. Uh, I thank you for being here again. Appreciate you so very much. If uh, stewardesses would come, let's prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. Also greater, um, on Good Friday, we're going to be in uh, service with other churches uh, in the district, doing a Good Friday service, uh, virtual, and pastor has to do his word. Pastor has to do his word. He has to do his word this week, and so I'm trying to decide whether I'll do it Wednesday night or Thursday. Uh, how many would you come back and sit in the audience just so the pastor could have somebody to preach to uh, this week? Just, just, just let me know. Say, Pastor, I'll come and I'll listen to you. Amen. If I've got it done by Wednesday, maybe I'll just do it Wednesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday evening. But uh, come on and uh, help your pastor out as he preaches. I'll only be about a 10-minute word. Amen. I asked the Lord for seven minutes and 59 seconds, but we'll see what happens with that. But we're doing the, we're doing the last word, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Amen. And the title of the sermon is, He's Got This because he's got me. He's got this, because he's got me. So y'all need to be here and just support your pastor, amen, while he preaches and records this uh, sermon, amen, for Good Friday. Uh, also, I do want to remind you, I do want to need to talk to the stewardesses and to the stewards, amen. We are doing Monday, Thursday service, amen. Uh, Thursday before the resurrection, we are doing the service and we are doing the feast. Amen. And so we'll put out a clipboard to see how many families will come. Um, people will come and be with us on that night as we do service. Service will be at 6.30. The feast will be around 7 o'clock. We will be in the basement. Amen. And we will be doing the lamb and the bitter herbs and the sop. And the sop. Yes, I need to see you. And the sop. Amen. Thank you. I need the sop. Amen. And we'll be celebrating communion. Amen. On Monday, Thursday. Holy week. Holy week. Uh, Saturday, Saturday after Palm Sunday, we will start seven days of prayer. Saturday after Palm Sunday, we'll start seven days of prayer. To those of you who used to do it, who want to do it, uh, we'll be back here on Monday nights, amen, tomorrow night at 6 p.m., covering the house, amen, in prayer. That'll be at 6 p.m. Uh, every Monday night, amen, covering the house in prayer. I do want to say something about that. God has been gracious to us. He's been real gracious to us in this house. And uh, we only attribute it to prayer. That's all we attribute it to, God being gracious to us and being uh, allowing our prayers to go through, whether it's during the week at noon or Monday nights. Amen. Praise God. But prepare for seven days of prayer. Amen in the third week of, second week, third week of April, amen. I need us all on in the evening. The information will go out. Seven days of prayer. Don't exclude yourself, y'all. Come on and be on. We'll do it virtually, amen. Seven days of prayer, y'all. Come on and do it in Jesus' name, amen. And if we want to do live, we'll do live too, amen. Yes, I know. Come on, come on. I got you. As we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion, amen. All who desire may come. This is what we will do on this afternoon. We will commune those who are watching us 
on Facebook right now, then I will get to you. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would, uh, on each side, when it's time to do it, stand. We're going to start from the back. Amen. And those of you who are in the pews closest to us, I want you to face the wall and come, starting from the rear, when it's time to do that. Amen. Uh, I do have some ushers here, so I do want some direction. I do want some guidance from our ushers, amen, that are here. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's go in. Let's call on the name of the Lord. Our prayer of general confession this afternoon, let's pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may evermore dwell in him. And grant that we may evermore dwell in the newness of life. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all them that with heart of repentance, true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all of our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our, whom our hearts, Almighty God, and whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, watch this, that we should all, at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, in the name that's above every name. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord most high. Amen. We do not presume. We don't take it for granted to be able to come even into the house and to this table, O God. But merciful Lord, we trust you today. We don't come in our own righteousness, but you made us righteous. And so we stand in your manifold and great mercies. We realize we're not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under the table. We're like the Syrophoenician woman. But you're the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, gracious Lord, to eat the flesh, that bread, the dear son Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, this juice, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. This is the consecration of these elements, you all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient satisfaction. Oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, you all, this is the second cup he took. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink all of it. It's my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many. For you and for many. For you and for many. For me and you. You and me. Everybody. Shed for you and me. Drink it as often as you shall in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. To those of you who are watching us right now on Facebook Live, here we are to celebrate Jesus, to celebrate this communion. Know all that we've done today. Realistically, the only thing he told us to do was this. 
do this in remembrance of me. And so if you're watching right now, you have your bread. Come on, take your bread. It was broken for you on Calvary Street. If you have your juice, come on, drink. We praise God for his goodness. We praise God for his mercy. We praise God for his love. We thank God. We're going to pray you out. Those of you who are watching us right now, dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, and destroyed. The word was for you today. Apply it in your life. Apply it in your situation. Apply it to what the doctors have said. Apply it to what your boss said. Apply it to what's going on in your body. May the Lord bless you. Come on and let's pray. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, through the power of, through the power of your shed blood, here we are this afternoon, God, calling on your name. For those who are watching, for those who are checking us out, God, on Facebook Live, we pray right now, God, that you pour out in their homes, that you would bless them, God, by your spirit. We pray for healing and wellness and wholeness to happen in their bodies, in their minds, in their souls even. We pray right now, God, that you do the miraculous for them because you're still the God of the miraculous. We are still the God that cancels cancer, that knocks out pneumonia, that locks up lupus, that conquers COVID. You're still the God who can make it dissolve, disappear, dissipate, and be destroyed. You're still that God today. So, Father, we just want to tell you thank you. We speak peace in that house. If there's chaos, we declare a word of peace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Where there's lack, we declare plenty because you are the God that's more than enough. We pray right now, God, for this household. We pray that you'd give the miracle that is needed today, God, in the precious name of Jesus. So, Father, we just want to tell you thank you right now. Thank you for doing the exceedingly and the abundantly, even in this moment. And we believe it by faith. In the name of Jesus, we say yes and thank you. And praise the Lord. We pray that you receive that word. We pray that you save today. We pray, amen, that the Lord would pour out in your life and that he'd bring glory in your home in the name of Jesus. Certainly, our prayer for you is that the Lord would wash you in and with his word. He would seal you by his spirit. He would baptize you with fire and fill you with the Holy Spirit. He would anoint you with his power. He would fill you with his love that is angels of safety and protection would be around about you and you'd be covered with the blood. That's our prayer for you. This is Pastor Robert Blake. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for being with us on this afternoon. And the Lord says so. You'll see us next week. In Jesus' name. If the Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, God bless you. <laughs>